Brand new Fujifilm X-T5 have finally arrived to us, and we can't actually decide, should we get it or not. Today I will tell you 5 reasons that made us think but doubt. Quickly leave a like and let's get started. My name is Ed, me and my team works at Gox UA, camera store in Ukraine. Yeah, you heard me right, we still have a working camera store even after those f Russians have been bombing our country for a year. But let's get to our topic, 5 main new features of Fujifilm X-T5. The first feature is the return of a tilt screen and in general a more photo-oriented body. Yes, Fujifilm returned X-T5 back to photographers. It's a step back to grassroots from hybrid X-T4 and even X-T3 in some sense. In the current generation of cameras, the logic of Fujifilm lineup has changed. The XH and XS lines are now your cameras of choice if you want video features. Yes, you lose some Fuji aesthetics, all those retro dials, but you get a full articulating screen, 7 custom modes for different video settings and more suitable for long video recording bodies. Everything else in the lineup is photography first and foremost. And X-T5 is a new flagship photographer's camera. Body became lighter, tilting screen made a comeback and video specs were put on the back burner. Welcome back photographer! Videographer? Get out! Second, there are many new things for those who didn't upgrade camera body for a long time. If you decided to skip a generation or two and still using X-T3 or even older camera, you will be pleased with the new battery. You get almost twice as much battery life with the new form factor. But one unpleasant surprise awaits you. Newer cameras don't come with a separate charger. You have to charge the battery inside the camera with a USB cable. Fujifilm doesn't even produce single battery chargers for this new battery type. Only pretty expensive dual chargers. My advice, get a third party charger. Battery life here is good and USB charging works at a pinch. Another new feature if you're still using older Fuji is sensor stabilization. This is already a third generation of the technology. Paired with OE's optics it gives you around 7 stops of stabilization. And about 5 without OES. That's a lot. This is the first Fujifilm camera with a new battery and sensor stabilization but without all those video quirks. The third reason is a new sensor. The Fujifilm X-T5 has a much more detailed 40 megapixel sensor that's a record for an APS-C cameras. But to notice the difference you will most likely have to upgrade your optics. Of course images won't be any worse in any way, but you won't see any bump in sharpness if you are still using Fuji old school primes like 35mm 1.4. With newer optics the difference will be noticeable, but to see everything you will have to buy the newest LM primes, 56mm 1.2 VR or something like that. Also, you may be forced to upgrade your computer and get more storage. Grinding through those 30 megapixel RAW files can be a tough task for older hardware. Another consequence of high megapixel count is troubles in video specs department. This sensor can do 4K 30, 60 and even 6K, but without oversampling from the entire sensor in any of these modes. You either have to settle for a line skipping or 1.22 crop. Both choices result in a loss of details and introduce more noise. The chunkier body of X-H2 allows you to get much more from this sensor and X-T5 is for photographers. Videographer, get out! Next, there is the new processor and its features. It's not only placed well with the new 40 megapixel sensor giving you respectable 15 to 20 frames per second, but it also supports an updated autofocus system. You now have tracking autofocus for cars, planes, trains, animals, birds and motorcycles. Works great, just don't forget to set the release on focus and not shutter. Autofocus in general faster, better and more reliable. And finally, the fifth point is the price. Due to euro devaluation, Fujifilm has changed its pricing. The X-T4 body used to cost $1,700 in the States and €1,800 in Europe. And now X-T5 also cost $1,700 in the States, but in Europe it's now €2,000. 
If you live in the US, well, more power to you. And for us Europeans, there is a lesson here. You don't trade, deal or even talk with tyrants. They will see this as a sign of weakness and will try to fuck your shit up and you will pay for it. Overall, if you are still using XT3 or older bodies, it's definitely time to upgrade. New body will offer you so much more in terms of image quality and quality of life. And XT4 users, it really depends on how are you using a camera. For video or hybrid usage, I would certainly suggest you getting XH2 or 2S. And photographers who enjoy XT4, I think you should just keep using it. And what do you think? Waiting for you in the comments.